does this happen? Well, a trade association engages with BIM for M2, so we've started the process today, hopefully. Um, we would basically advise you on the process and also appoint a mentor. In other words, somebody who's already been through the creation of product data templates, and probably in this particular instance, it might be the guy called Matt Crundon, who works at Legrand. Um, <clears throat> we appoint a mentor, and that mentor is there to help you through the process as a, as a trade association to produce a product data template or templates for the particular products represented by your membership. Uh, the trade association appoints members to develop the PDT. So typically what happens is, you know, you have a trade association which may have 50, 100, 200 members. Usually there are two or three brave souls that step forward from different companies and say, okay, we will take the responsibility to produce the first product data template, work within the auspices of the trade association, and then obviously get to the point where um, they can uh, ask for support from the BIM for M2 mentor, but then the trade association publishes the product data template to all of its membership for comment. Because fundamentally, at the end of the day, you all have to agree on this. This represents all of you, OK? Um, gather any relevant feedback and amend the product data template as appropriate. Send it to the, the work group that I'm the chair of so that we can just do a quick sanity check on it. We obviously don't know what the data is that you want to include in this, but what we can do is to at least ensure that there's some consistency in terms of the way that that data is uh, described. In other words, if you're going to put in length, uh, is that overall length or is that inside length or is that some sort of nominal length? So we need to make sure that the, the, uh, the terminology that we're using is consistent. Then we approve it for use and then we can publish it on the CPA website and obviously the members themselves can basically pick that up and use that to produce their own product data uh, sheets for their individual products. Okay? Any questions? You're all being very stoic, I think the word is. So what does this data storage on the MDL website recommend um, or a series of these takes up and the template of the data on the on the BIM toolkit. Yeah. Um, yeah. The pro the problem with the ones on the the BIM toolkit, is that they only work at a project level. In other words, they are not a standard definition. They're also not very consistent in terms of the, the data that's actually put into them. Uh, the reason why we're working with MBS and, and, uh, the, and their toolkit is that what we're trying to do is to pull all these disparate things together. You kind of pinpointed an absolute truth, which is it's a mess. It really is a mess. And therefore, what we're trying to do is basically bring all of the people who are contributing to the mess, and, to, and you could argue to some extent, so has BIM for M2, uh, because we're trying to do something in a, a different way to what other people have done. We're trying to do it properly, I, I hope. <clears throat> um, so yes, that, that will need to be addressed. Um, some of what the, what's in the MBS toolkit will actually get, I'm sure, absorbed into. Fundamentally, at the end of the day, the home for all of this is going to be the Construction Products Association website. That's where it's all going to end up. Now, that probably won't happen until the spring of this year. <clears throat> now, I'll just, so I've kind of described a relatively simple set of data that's required. That simple set of data um, will get you to BIM Level 2 uh, compliance, which is pretty much all that people are asking for at this stage, which means that somewhere in this process, somebody can produce uh, typically, it's the main contractor at, just before handover can produce this COBE output, which is the driver that goes into the computer-aided facilities management systems that they're all using. Now, <clears throat> I guess you're probably all aware that actually that one of the impacts, of course, of the recession and also one of the impacts of the fact that there's been a, a significant drive down in terms of cost, both in terms of design and construction, is that all of the main contractors are now looking at or have already established FM businesses. Because fundamentally, if you're only getting 17% of the slice of the cake, but you've got the opportunity to get the other 80% as well, then why wouldn't you? So those, those guys that have already been in FM for, for some time have got a, a flying start, but everybody is experimenting with uh, businesses of one description or another which are associated with FM. <clears throat> so what I just want to do is to kind of take a slightly different view, and this is a personal view, but I'm slowly getting my colleagues within BIM for M2, at least in the data templates group, to kind of 
accept and acknowledge this. <clears throat> if we take the real world, we all deal with physical things. You know, you deal with physical products that you produce. And in this particular instance, uh, I just happen to have um, a couple of examples. One is a physical product, which happens to be a natural ventilation system. And of course, we produce physical things about that, which are booklets or, or um, brochures that are in the physical world as paper. And in the virtual world, actually, that doesn't exist in that same form. All that we're concerned about in the virtual world is data and methods. So typically what we find is that in this world we've got products that allow us to create BIM models, things like Autodesk Revit, Graphsoft Archicad, a whole range of different products. Something like a couple of hundred, to be honest, that allow us to basically manipulate data which, to, which is to do with construction. <clears throat> and there's an organization called Building Smart, which I'm not sure, anyone heard of Building Smart? Okay. Building Smart is trying on an international basis is trying to create an umbrella framework for how all of the um, data in the virtual world moves around. And they've started that by creating something called IFC, Industry Foundation Classes. I don't know if anyone's heard about those sorts of things. But, but fundamentally, Industry Foundation Classes are battling against the fact that all of these other guys have been around for a long time and have created their own de facto standards in terms of how data is communicated. And there are lots of other products that turn up in more advanced applications. And then, of course, you've got the new MBS toolkit, which requires something else from the physical world, which is a kind of a description from the client in terms of what they're trying to achieve. OK? Now, stuff that's described in the real world has to percolate down into the virtual world in order that those data and those methods can, be, uh, can happen. And the reason that they're happening is that we're trying to create outcomes. We're trying to create information. And the initial outcomes that we were trying to do was mostly to do with visualization, things like clash detection, to make sure that we had coordinated designs and we could actually construct what it was that we, try, we were trying to de, um, design. And then, of course, we got a little more sophisticated when Kobe came along because we basically wanted some information in a, in a spreadsheet format. And that suddenly triggered the need for these product data templates and product data sheets. In other words, a structured way of describing the data that you guys have always been providing, but you provide it in PDFs, you provide it all over the place in different uh, product specification sheets, brochures, etc. It's inconsistent in terms of you have to be a human to look at it to understand what it is. A computer can't understand any of that stuff, so you're being forced, if you like, into regulating and regularizing that data so that it's all in a simple and consistent format. Downside, of course, is it becomes very easy to compare different products. Because now you don't have to hunt about and look at all the different specifications. You just look at the different product data sheets, and you can use the, the kind of capability just to compare them very easily. <clears throat> and what we're basically uh, moving towards as we move from left to right is the requirement for more and more information. Now, I'm in the fortunate position where I pretty much work with all of the main contractors and their BIM teams, so I know what they're doing, and I know what they're aspiring to do uh, as they get uh, more sophisticated. What's going to be a truism is that the data <coughs> that is going to be required won't be as simple as it is described by Kobe today, because that's just a very simple little subset of data that is required because the government wants to try and manage, from an FM point of view, its maintainable assets in a more sensible way. So my advice, um, when, if I'm walk, talking to a trade association or a manufacturer, is, look, you've spent decades working out what information, what data, you actually need to provide to the industry, your the people who install your products, the, uh, um, the main contractors who ask questions, the people who ask questions about how to maintain your products. You spent decades understanding those sorts of questions, and to a great extent, including all of that data into the various product brochures and, and specification sheets that you produce today. So why don't we just stop messing around and not do a little bit, but why don't we just say, what's the data that we think the industry needs? Why shouldn't we do that right now? Because all that's going to happen is, yes, you can produce a Kobe sheet today, and I guarantee that you'll find that Langer Rock will come along and they'll ask for a bit more data. And then Scanscore will come along and they'll ask for a bit more data. And then, and then, and then. And all that will happen is you'll keep revising these product data sheets and you'll have to keep 
updating them all the time. So why not just start from the base of what do we know today that we provide to the industry? Why don't we just regularize that? Because this is a complete mess. There are no standards in this area. Everyone does their own thing in their own chaotic way. And all that you're going to do is basically sit on the horizon here and basically say, this is what we know about the real world and what the real world from a, manuf from a construction and design point of view requires. And therefore, we'll provide that data, perhaps just in a spreadsheet format, and it can sit there on that boundary, and the virtual world can pull out of that because it's electronic, can pull out of that whatever it wants for whatever of these particular applications are appropriate. So my advice would be, don't just go with the kind of the standard template that has been provided today for Kobe. That's too narrow, that's too small. Go for something that's much more representative of the data that you already provide in your product data sheets and your brochures, et cetera. Okay? Now, I often get asked the question, is it sufficient to produce just a spreadsheet of data? Um, and that really is your choice, to be honest. Um, because what I will say is that in terms of a BIM object, yes, it's made up of something that's a geometric representation of the product that sits in the virtual world. It's also made up of structured data that is connected into that. And it's also made up of references from that structured data into other documents that you might have sitting on the web, such as PDFs, etc. Now. What the government is requiring you to do is basically to produce that, okay? In practical terms, I'd have to say pretty much no manufacturer is only producing that. They're producing this. And the reason for that is quite simple, which is, as I said, that data has to get into the BIM model. The only way that you can get into the BIM model in the right place is to be attached to the right representation of the product geometrically within the model. Because one of the outputs from Kobe is to describe for each product that is actually in the building what its X, Y, Z coordinates are, where it sits in space. And unless you take this data and you put it into the geometric model that sits, geometric object that sits within the model, then you can't do that. So the question for a manufacturer is, do we want to provide one of these in the first place with that already preloaded in it or, or already available? Or do we want to trust that some designer or some construction professional somewhere is going to copy and paste this data out of here and put it into there? Which is the reason why pretty much every manufacturer that I'm aware of has basically decided to either produce or have produced geometric objects which have got the data in. But the choice is yours. You will be BIM compliant if you do this.